Okay. But to understand vectors, uh, what you have to get here is we are going to three dimensional space. And that is perhaps what complicates um, what we're looking at here. Because mostly you're used to two dimensions, X and Y. But now we're looking at a third dimension, which is going to be Z. Now, the first thing we want to look at is how to actually visualize uh, a 3D uh, space. By visualize here, we're going to use points. We're going to try to, uh, to, uh, to plot two points in space, and then later on, try to see if we can uh, analyze the distance between them. Now, plotting these points is going to be difficult, but what helps you uh, figure out what is really happening is going to be a few indicators that are going to put. If I give you two points like this one, and then I also put another point like maybe, uh, let me say one point is here and one point is here, it becomes very difficult for you to see exactly what is happening to those points. Where is their x axis? Are the x components? What is the x component for this point, for each point? Are the points below this, the, the y axis and below the, yeah, down in the negative z, or are they above because they seem to be above the y axis? So it's hard to pinpoint or to actually understand those two points if I just drop them like that. But what gives these points a little bit of a picture or um, the detail that we need here is going to be um, some lines are going to, to include here to show the parts which are parallel to the axis until when we reach those particular points. For example, if I was to now just do this to reach that first point, if I was to just start first by tracing a line parallel to the y-axis in doing this, now you can easily tell that, okay, this point clearly is in the positive y because the positive y would have to be something like that. And if from here, I also trace another line that is more like this, now you can tell that this point clearly, it is in the positive x direction because you have to move from this going like that. And finally, if I was to now just trace something like that, now it makes a whole lot of sense where this point, if I label it A, it makes a whole lot of sense where that point is. So in the same way, to reach this point B, I'd have to put a few indicators to help you just in, um, visualize it so that you can see where it is. So if this is the negative uh, x-axis, we can say that firstly, uh, you move from here, I can say you have uh, something like this where you go down. And then from here, I can say you have something like this. And then from here, then I can say you have something like this. Again, with something like this, it becomes easy for you to picture where the point B is. So, so that if we were to look at the point, uh, something like this, the distance between them, it becomes easy for us to visualize what is happening. To reach point A, for example, you can see that all you had to do or all you have to do is move from the origin. In the x-axis, you move like that, positive x. In the y-axis, you move like this, positive y. In the z-axis, you go up. This will take you to the point A. That shows up once we put those indications down. And then to reach point B, starting from the origin, what are we doing there? You'd have to move in the x-axis, you're going to the negative x. In the y-axis, positive y. And then in the z-axis, you go to, you go up. Again, you see that with the indicators that we sketched down, it becomes easy to actually see what is happening. Now, let's try to sketch these points uh, that have been indicated for us. How do you do it? How do you start? Um, here we have the points 1, 4, 2. Let's try to sketch that point. So again, we'll start with our coordinate axis. Okay, so we have our coordinate axis down. Now, what's the first thing? So you have 1, 4, 2, that is the one, yeah. I want to sketch 1, 4, 2. How do I do it? Well, I just have to start with uh, the components. The, those, the one gives me the X displacement, the four gives me the displacement in the Y, and the two gives me the displacement in the Z. So I'll take those displacements as movements I have to make in the respective axis. The first one is a one, and it's a positive one. So that is telling me that I have to move along the positive X axis, 
and I have to move by one unit. So I'll say from here to here, moving parallel to the x-axis. So I take this as a one here. So that is uh, where one is. Notice that what I've made here is basically just something that looks like this when I was just drawing those displacements to reach my point. Next up, in the y-axis, they're saying I have to move four units in the y-axis. The y-axis is this side. Post even the y-axis, I have to go like that. Had it been negative, I would have had to go like that, but it has to be parallel to the y-axis. So if you do something like, uh, where is that? If you do something like this, this is not parallel to the y-axis, so clearly that would be wrong. So we have to do parallel to the y-axis. So I want to use the y-axis as a reference line and then do something. Of course, this is a sketch. It won't be perfect, but you want to try as much as possible for the displacement in the y-axis to be as parallel to the y-axis as you can as you can make it. So that becomes the displacement in the y-axis. Once we've done that, now the remaining one is in the z-axis, which is a two. So I just sketch, trace this in dotted form so that we have that full picture of where we are. This tells us to say that the lines we have currently drawn are literally lying on the X, Y plane. So we're literally just on the, on the ground where Z is zero. So this is what this uh, rectangle at the bottom here helps us to, uh, to just put in frame. The last one now would have to be the Z component. And the Z component is said to be a two, so we have to go up. Now to go up, clearly, if you go like this, this doesn't make sense, then what are you, what are you doing there? So what we'd have to do here is, again, a Z component implies that we have to move as parallel to the Z axis as possible. In this case, since it is positive, would have to go up. Had it been negative, would have to go down like this. Again, even though it is down, observe that I'm trying by all means to ensure that it is parallel to the Z axis. It might not be perfect, but it should just show up that it is parallel to the Z. So in this case, it's a positive two, so we'll go upwards. Since it is just a two, I'll try by all means to make sure that it's not as, um, as long as uh, a four when I had to use a four, but again, no one will police you about that, so I can just do that. Having reached that far, then we can say we have reached our Z. If you're not happy with how parallel this is, ah, this looks like it's a very, very good, good approximation. So we can leave it the way it is. Okay, so this takes us to our point. So our point is right here. So take, we can take this as point A. So we can label it as A. So this gives us the first point and we have sketched it. We can put the coordinates there as well, but I just have them here as my A, putting point A there uh, tells us exactly what the points there would be. I'll, I might just want to show that this here is a four. And the only thing else I'd have to show here is, you have to see that if I was to say, this is where two is, this again doesn't make sense. If you just trace a horizontal line uh, from the vertical axis to there, that would not make sense. What you should see here is that the line that comes on top, connecting from the Z to where this point is, it has to be a line that is parallel to this one here. So it has to be a line parallel to this. In other words, it will have to be a line that starts from the Z and comes more like that. So in fact, to make sure that this makes more sense, you can even keep both lines there so that it actually makes sense what is happening there. Now, of course, because these are not part of the whole thing, you can actually keep them in dotted form. Meaning, what I can do here is, I can have a dotted line from here, coming down like this, and another dotted line at the bottom that comes down like this. And because these are also not vectors, uh, they're not vectors, the ones uh, I was using to say moving one there, it would be wise for us to also indicate them as dotted lines. We just use solid lines so that you guys get how the displacements were, were going. And perhaps this one in the Y as well, we'll use a dotted line. Okay, so we've reached that point A. 
Now we'll go to point B and we'll be a little bit fast about it. That's negative one, five, and one. So negative one means that we're in the negative x-axis. So negative x-axis, where is it? Somewhere this side. Negative x-axis by one. So somewhere up to there. Next up, uh, five in the positive y. Five in the positive y parallel to the y-axis, I'll do that. I have to exceed four. So let's hope that is exceeding four. So I'll just put this to show that uh, this is where we're coming. So this is where my five is on the y-axis. Then having done that, the next part is now to go in the vertical axis. We're going in the vertical axis by one. So this one has to just be by one. So it will be from here, just a little bit up to here. So this is where my point B is. And our B is negative one comma six, is it five? Comma five comma one. Yeah, that's negative one, five, come on. So this is our point B. So having done that, we can easily now just join them since they want us to find the distance between them. So the distance between them will be this distance from A to B. So the first part was to sketch our points, which we have. The second part is to actually get the distance between the two points. So if we wanted to get the distance between the two points, let's label that as D. So the distance between the two points is basically just the magnitude of their displacement vector, as in the displacement between them. So the displacement we're going for here is basically just A, B. So the magnitude here. So this is what will give us the distance between them. So how do we get that distance between them? In this case, of course, how we get the displacement is going to be the destination minus the starting point. Pardon? Now, what did you say? OB minus OA. Yeah, yeah, minus, minus OA. So since we have the coordinates of both A and B, what we say here is B, which is negative one for the X part, negative one minus from A, we have a one. This becomes negative one minus one squared. Then plus, then we have the Y component or the Y coordinate, which is from B, we have five, minus four. So we have five minus four. Then this is squared as well. Then lastly, the Z component, that's one minus two. So this is plus one minus two. Then this has to be squared. Notice that for distance between two points, it doesn't matter whether you start with B minus, uh, minus A or A minus, minus B. The fact that we're going to square each difference there means that whether we swap them, it will still be the same answer. So this reduces to just, this is going to be um, two, going to be negative two squared. This is going to be uh, one squared. And this is going to be plus negative one squared. So from here, of course, this is four, this is one, and this is one, so you have six then. So here we have root six. Okay, so whatever the units, so this is how we approach uh, this type of questions. You guys can now try to see if you can work out uh, A, B, uh, B and C there, since we have done A. Okay, any questions there?